Honey Badger Radio is the convoluted and never-ending answer to a question nobody asked in the appropriate context. Are you confused? You should be. Life is almost as confusing as death. This week on Honey Badger Radio, another installment of the ongoing drama between gamers and corporate media known as Gamergate. Hooray for the media! Special guests James Jesbra and Giovanna Lane sit near a gas outlet and start talking to a dog. It's wacky! We have the best chat. Tremendous. <laughs> on the whole, it was it was good for the industry, good for the community and so on. Personally, it's been rather costly and has made me even more of a misanthrope than I already was. And it's usually because it's become really popular. Comics is the same thing. Before these comic book movies came out, and after Frederick Wortham tried to say essentially that comics were corrupting our youth and creating delinquents in the 1950s, well, at the time that that happened, comics were humongous industries for their time. Bigger than television, you know, they, they, they sold lots of issues, uh, it came on the heels of World War II, where, you know, soldiers were reading them, college students were starting to read them, and children everywhere. And so when this guy comes out, he only does so because he saw how popular it was. When it comes to uh, authoritarians, uh, people tend to resist people who are telling them what to do. In general, you know, human beings do that. But when the premise behind the authoritarianism is in defense of women, minorities, trans people, the LGB community, um, things like that, it's harder for people to see that there's still an authoritarian angle coming from it. Ask anybody, they'll tell you. It's the best, <laughs> just <laughs> tremendous chat over here. On the poll cat cast cat cast this week, the news team discussed the newest news the news has to offer, and it's new! What do you want? The Jan. Why, why, why would you do that, Brian? Because I'm trying to get us kicked off of YouTube forever. They want to be the most oppressed group. And this is the this is the contest to be most suppressed. Anti-feminist orgies. So we call that Honey Badger Radio. <laughs> as far as Gone with the Wind goes, look, it's. Are we just gonna start taking like history books out of classrooms, or like stop showing historical documents in the forms of films or books, uh, fiction, just because it happens to demonstrate some really really aged attitudes? Look. Gone with the Wind, despite the fact that some of its material is very much something that is a product of its time, you know, was made back in 1939, it's still one of the most important pieces of American filmmaking that has ever been around. Not just for the fact that it's garnered, I think it's the highest grossing film of all time when adjusted for inflation, but it's also just a magnificent film. All the performances, the writing, when you put aside the just the social commentary involving them being in the South at that time, it's something that everybody should experience. It's an epic film. I don't think anyone should be put in, you know, this sort of like uh, purgatory of, of, of YouTube because unless they're like breaking the guidelines, like they have sex and nudity and porn and shit that YouTube was never supposed to have up, uh, then... Th there is no reason to put them there. That's my personal belief. I don't care what you think. I don't care if it's f feminist. Sh sh I would never in a million years say that they can't make videos on YouTube. I just want to say Amy Schumer needs to shut the fuck up about equal, equal treatment until she does three months in jail and has a, a shitload of angry feminists throw, uh, show up in, on, on her street with guns that can shoot through brick and mortar to protest her early release. After what, what she bragged about doing when she was in college, she bragged about going to a guy's house when he was so drunk he couldn't see straight and having sex with him while he was so drunk he couldn't stay awake during the activity. And, and feminists have, have lauded her as brave for, for talking about this. And she's treated it, and they've treated it as a story in which she was mistreated sexually. Um, and, and I don't think she deserves to even open her mouth about equal treatment until she goes through what feminists put Brock Turner through for, for not being sober enough to recognize when his partner was too drunk to continue. I mean, obviously, if she wants equal treatment, she was stone cold sober when she did that stuff. If she wants equal treatment, go to jail. You did something that feminists say when a man does it is rape. 
In fact, you did something that feminists would, would want to string you up for if you were a man. Go to jail. Get that equal treatment. And if you don't go to jail, shut the fuck up about equal treatment until you do. I bring the lube. Okay, it's, go. It's party time. Damn right. <laughs> Say, do you have a bug up your ass about low-hanging fruit? Online criticism of feminism is never about academic feminism and all its robust arguments, you say? Well, you're full of shit! Honey Badger Radio and Teal Dare have been doing this for years! You've just never noticed because you don't have the stomach! Through the <laughs> anal window into the, into the men's rights movement, <laughs> where everything is related to sex. Teal Dare, Mike, do you guys like go in a locker room and then just teach each other methods to, to reduce, like... I, you know, corner a woman in a dark alley. Has it ever happened? Well, he's a dead. Uh, he used to be a right. sea creature. He's got some great advice. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> That's fair game, and your dick's going in it. I'm just gonna flat out say it. Feminism is misogyny. You're fucking misogynists. You hate women. You only like them as political tools. If they have any individuality, any individual expression, any individual agency, you rather appropriate it and say it, well, feminism gave that to you, or you force them to deny it exists. You guys are fucking, you, I just don't even have to look at what you do to men. You're fucking horrible to women. And I ha you have the gall to say that anybody who opposes you hates women. You hate women. At least as time goes on, I... I I do have to, in some ways, try to commend the, the feminists for doing this. They're actually now addressing, in some capacity, what the MRM is saying. Uh, even though the last one that I looked at, it was, well, we can't deny how people feel, except for men's rights activists, because they're lying about their feelings, so we need to find a way of invalidating them. Yeah, because you can, you can lie about your feelings. If you're a man and a, and a men's rights activist, yeah. So mm -hmm. th th this, they're they're kind of trying. They're just doing it in the weakest way possible, and really, they address ultimately straw men of what the MRM is, as opposed to actually taking on the big points. And I've even seen authors again just say, "Well, there's right, there's people about talking about." intactivism and the objectively measurable differences between things like child custody rates, but we're not going to address that this time. Instead, what we're going to do is talk about an internet forum where one guy said that one time, men are just fucked. And <laughs> turn, turn all of this into a giant uh, psychological peep. <laughs> Struggles around, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Phrasing! In Badger Talk 7, Karen and Hannah discuss those magnificent men and their floating machines. Apparently in Texas, they don't virtue signal, they virtue act. It's a strange and scary world. Hold me. Technical difficulties are yes. the best kind of difficulties. <laughs> Just like technically correct yes. is the best kind of correct. But this is definitely not technically correct. This is mm. already technically a mess. Everybody in Alberta is married to or the mother of or the daughter of or the cousin of or the niece of some man who does some kind of what mike rowe would have profiled on his show dirty jobs right every single woman knows personally and cares about at least one man who does that shit here in alberta right so we have an appreciation for the fact that men are willing more willing than we are to be out in the weather, where they're more willing than we are to freeze their hands throwing pipe down a fucking oil well, right? They're they're more willing than we are to to be up in a cherry picker cutting uh, loose branches off of trees after windstorms so they won't fall on my car and make me late for work, right? They are more willing to do all of these things that keep everything running, and. They are also more willing to push somebody's freaking stalled truck off of a train track just in time and things like that. And we are more able to see that than some, some feminist cunt in Toronto, right? Or Vancouver, because they live in these gigantic fucking cities where the wilderness never encroaches, where nobody has any dirt under their nails, right? 
at, or they they have never have occasion during their day to be forced to interact with somebody who has dirt under their nails. The positive and the negative end of male disposability is when there's an emergency, men will risk themselves to protect the community. And yeah. the community gets so used to it that there doesn't have to be an emergency for them to demand that. And I think that we need to get back to a time where, um, you know, we do have, uh, maybe not necessarily ticker tape parades is a good way to put it, but, but the fact that we value when men do this, um, yeah. that's why I was so gratified to see all the news stories where the, the reporters were, this is a feel good story. This guy went out in this boat and he rescued 50 people, you know, that, that should be celebrated. It's, there should yep. be a, a celebration of that that aspect of masculinity every time, and yep. it's I'm I'm happy to see that that happening. When you actually look at how human men behave toward each other and the level of um, cooperation, uh, well, tolerance even, right? That tolerance of each other. They're you know they're living in cities among mil a million other men, right? to whom they are not genetically related. They have no relation whatsoever. If, if we were chimpanzees, it would be constant, constant fighting between the, the males, right? There would just be constant violence, right? Um, and there would be very little cooperation. The only cooperation would happen within clans, right? And so when I look at how I mean, how we are as a species is very much a function of how men are capable of being toward each other. And that is tolerant, cooperative, um, working together, forming hierarchies, uh, you know, you throw them all together on, on an island out in the middle of nowhere to survive. Um, 14 of them or however many, and they will form hierarchies, they will assign tasks, they will, you know, and they will get to the business of, of surviving. So don't miss next week's Honey Badger Radio like you missed this week's, you assholes. Hey, I'm a professional broadcaster. Don't tell me how to do my job. If I want to call people assholes, I'll go, I'll go right ahead and call them sexist, racist bigots. I'm better than you. Of course I am. Of course. Why are you, why are you laughing? Why, why are you not laughing? What are you, what's that, what's happening? Are you, are you fading me out? I refuse to be faded out. I, I've never been so mistreated in all my career. I'm being, I'm being blackwashed. I mean, I'm being whitewashed. I mean, I'm, I'm being whitelisted, blacklisted. Shit, what do I mean? I'm a racist.